Today we're talking SOC Analyst 1 and everything you would want to know about that job before you actually have to do it. Coming up. Today we're talking about the Security Operations Analyst entry level position job. This job is pretty widely available within the cybersecurity community uh, across uh, you know, different enterprises, different industries, um, different sized organizations. Large organizations tend to have an in-house kind of security operation and smaller to medium sized ones might outsource it to managed uh, security s services provider or basically you know, kind of a SOC that is has multiple clients who don't have one in-house. So for the show today, I couldn't think of a better person to interview than Eric Capuano of Recon InfoSec. He's the CTO there and basically has a long storied career working in security operations centers all the way from his Air Force days where he was kind of an entry level SOC 1 analyst all the way up to uh, today where he runs a company that basically provides that managed service. Most of the video today will be that interview with him. I will um, preface this by saying uh, this whole series of choose your own adventure. I I'm still figuring out exactly how I plan on delivering the content and I was going to just take notes from our interview with Eric and then provide that to you myself. But I really felt uh, Eric delivered so much value and really hearing it from his perspective, I think is going to give you um, really the perspective and the appreciation for what the security operations analyst level one job is. So I wanted it. Uh, so I chose to, you know, basically show you uh, the interview itself. So I'm going to just break it down right here on the different parts of the interview and what the time breakouts would be. So you can either you know watch the whole interview or jump around to different sections or come back even uh, to refresh yourself. So hopefully that'll uh, be somewhat useful. So we're going to talk uh, to Eric now. So let's hop in. Well, I mean, there's there's a broader expectation, right? And then you know I, I kind of have my spin on that. Um, the, the more broad expectation is that, um, you know, uh, an entry level analyst, you know, is, is essentially that front line of, 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 of defense and triage of, you know, if you, you've got sensors deployed in the environment, right, and these sensors by themselves uh, deliver limited value because they, they can't solve problems for you. Um, they might be able to, um, you know, proactively block activity, but a lot of organizations are head shy to do that. So a lot of the times these sensors are producing um, alerts based on traffic or, or activity that's happening, um, and it's up to a human to analyze what these sensors are, are, are reporting on to determine, you know, is this something that, that needs to be you know, taken action on, right? Or is this just simply regular or normal activity for this environment? And that's a non-trivial activity, right? Because it literally, it varies from place to place, from organization to organization. Um, you know, sitting down and looking at what an IPS is spitting out, looking at what a SIEM is spitting out and saying, you know, is this normal for this environment or not? And that requires, you know, longevity. It requires understanding of the mission of that organization um, and, and, and baselining. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. And so a lot of that is what rolls into the expectations of a SOC analyst, not just to, to, to ingest an alert and assume everything that you see here is a breach, and then spend countless hours investigating what happened on an endpoint just because you got a single uh, detection. Uh, it's instead being, being quick and effective at triaging the data coming out of a seam or something like that, and knowing when to invest a lot of time into investigation or also knowing when a signature needs to be tuned to prevent alert fatigue, right? So it's, yeah. it's, it's really, um, it, that's, that's the ultimate struggle there. So let me ask you this, how much of um, kind of the typical SOC job would be, for an entry level person, would be kind of following the appropriate playbook versus, I don't want to call it freestyling, but, you know, sure. yeah. following your gut or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's an interesting uh, question because um, obviously, so, you know, my, my you know, er the earliest part of my career, um, I was uh, aircraft maintenance for the Air Force. And, um, and I bring that up because one of the things that I loved about that career path was that every single thing that we did on a jet, there was a, a by the number technical manual that said how to remove the panel, how to troubleshoot this computer in the avionics bay, and then how to swap it out if need be, right? And therefore, there was never any question about how to perform a particular task. Um, 
And, and I think a lot of folks recognize that, you know, security operations um, can and should follow a similar structure. But here's the biggest issue that I see. It, just like I, I mentioned, you know, knowing how to hunt for evil in an organization, there's no manual for that because it varies so wildly uh, based on, you know, place to place. Well, similarly, how to respond to these situations or how to triage these types of incidents can seldom be a cookie cutter type playbook. And therefore, it's left to the organization, right? So it's left to the SOC to build these playbooks. So when you have a small team of three or four or five SOC analysts, unless one of those has been in that organization for five plus years and just happens to be a fantastic critical thinker and really good at predicting the many different forks that an investigation can take, most of these teams don't have these playbooks. Um, so, so the short answer to your question is, should a SOC analyst be following playbooks? Absolutely. The problem is they seldom exist because that's, that's also a non-trivial activity to create those playbooks. Um, so, you know, my sort of, um, uh, you know, theory of operation for a SOC is for every task that an analyst does on a daily basis, there should be an internal wiki entry for that task, some sort of procedural uh, document, right? And the best time to be creating and updating that document is while the analyst is performing that task, right? Not, not as, a, as an afterthought, right? Like, hey, let's, let's spend Friday afternoons working on documentation. That's the wrong mm -hmm. approach because one, if I'm working on the documentation outside of doing that actual task, I'm going off of memory, I'm just kind of, you know, throwing darts at a board here. But if I'm writing the doc as I'm doing the task, much better chance of that being pretty true to life and true to the workflow of, this, of the operation. Interesting. So kind of a natural segue then is what, what would you identify as prereq skills for, for a SOC 1 analyst? But, and I'm thinking there's probably some hard skills and some, some soft skills. Yeah. So um, again, this is one of those, um, this is one of those there's, a, there's an industry answer, um, but I'll, I'll, straight, I'll skip straight to kind of giving you my answer for this because it's, 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 it's done well for me um, to, to kind of hire this way. Um, so essentially, I think one of the most critical role or one of the most critical um, character traits of a successful SOC analyst is strictly critical thinking. Um, and and I've, I've, I've had interviews with entry-level analysts before that had no prior security experience. Maybe they came off of an IT help desk somewhere. Maybe they were previously a, a system administrator or software engineer. You have it. And, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a noticeable confidence sort of, you know, uh, or a lack of confidence, right, um, in these interviews. But right off the bat, I'll, I'll clear the air and say, listen, I know that you're coming with no experience and that's okay, right? So if I ask you some security-related questions that you don't know the answer to, I'm actually fine with that. What I want to know is how do you think through the problem, right? Even if you produce a wrong answer, if I can just peer into to your thought process and understand how you approach an issue, do you immediately give up because it's difficult or because you don't know the answer? Or do you still try to, you know, you know reduce down to the most likely correct answer? Um, that means a lot more to me than just being able to regurgitate what a Security Plus study guide said, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I've absolutely hired folks that theoretically bombed the interview, but because I was able to peer into their thought process and see that critical thinking because you know what, I can fill in the training gaps, right? I can teach you the concepts that you don't know, but it's actually very hard to instill the critical thinking trait, right? Um, you kind of you kind of have it or you don't, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so that's probably the most critical dependency that 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 I would identify, because you know training and experience that comes with the job. It's a natural sort of progression, um, but critical thinking is is key there. Um, and another thing that I would say is, and it kind of feeds, you know, feeds uh, from, from the previous statement is be comfortable not knowing, right? Like, you know, because most of the time a SOC analyst is sitting here looking at something that at face value, they don't know what it is. They don't know what it means. And you have, you have to be comfortable with that. But you also have to be comfortable with self-starting and knowing how to kind of chase that down to get to the answer you know, as quickly as you can, you know, um, but also knowing when to raise your hand and say, hey, you know what, I've spent about 15, 20 minutes trying to, to triage this. I'm just not sure what it is. And then, you know, being able to communicate with a colleague for an escalation to say, can I get another set of eyes on this? 
uh, versus kind of digging your heels in and, you know, spending hours upon hours triaging something that a more seasoned analyst might have helped you deconflict much quicker, right? So being comfortable in the unknown, but then also knowing how to, to call for help for the efficiency mm-hmm. of the stock. So as far as kind of career path, if someone were to become a SOC analyst, um, I mean, is it, is it so structured that, it, you know, it's just SOC 2, SOC 3 uh, would be the career path? Or what do you, what do you see as someone who's been a, an analyst one for a year and a half? Like what, what, what kind of realistic options they have? Quite a few, actually. Now, it, it does vary from organization to an organization. Um, but actually, I would say that um, there are many possibilities as, as either an upward or a lateral movement from, uh, from a SOC analyst position because oftentimes, you know, a, an entry-level SOC position is really just a feeder into an organization that has many other positions that are related to that field, right? So if you come in as a very broad SOC you know, analyst, um, you can sort of, from that point, you know, choose your own adventure, if you will, to say, hey, the, 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 the cases I love the most are the ones where I get to reverse engineer some piece of malware, right? Well, if your team is large enough and has enough, uh, you know, specialty focuses that you can eventually transition into a reversing, reverse engineering type position, that might be your next, you know, your next path, right? Versus going up to a SOC analyst level two, you might actually you know, switch over to a more focused uh, specialty based on something you're interested in. And that's actually something that I foster with my teams because one, you know, um, those positions need to be filled. And two, um, it's a component that helps keep the SOC analyst happy, that helps keep people at the organization longer. If you let them do what makes them happy, that's how you build and keep uh, really good teams. So as far as like, I, I do want to send a minute talk about pros and cons of the jobs. I have my own assumptions of what you might say, but you know, having done as much SOC work as you've done, what is like the best part of that job? I would have to say the best part of the SOC work is that, um, of course, depending on you know, depending on your role, if you're in a if you're in a larger team where you're very very much uh, kind of shoehorned into a one specific function. Um, which is not, you know, the status quo. Uh, so on most SOC teams where you're wearing multiple hats, uh, one minute you're troubleshooting, uh, you know, a, a host-based sensor that's not producing the right telemetry. Uh, another minute you're chasing down a suspicious, you know, parent-child process creation, you know, uh, situation. Um, it never gets old, right? Like every day you come into work, you know, you, n- you have no idea what you're going to face today. You know, it, it could be a relatively quiet day where maybe you just deal with a couple uh, phishing attacks. Um, it, it could be something much more serious than that, you know, um, you know, dealing with targeted campaigns uh, or, or, you know, malware that seems to have been crafted particularly for a specific client, customer, um, you know, and then when, when it is quiet, right, when you're not putting out fires, that doesn't mean that you're bored and you're sitting here and waiting for the next fire. It actually means that now you get to go into the back end of your detection tools and, you know, write new signatures for emerging threats. So it's, it's this, this constant sort of, uh, you know, shifting between, you know, responding to situations and then bolstering our detection so that we, you know, don't miss the things that we need to be detecting. But what, what would you say is kind of the biggest downside to the role? Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you, um, I'll give you two because I, I think they're, they're equally, you know, if I had to give you a list, you know, one, two, and three, there'd be two number ones. Um, so, uh, one of the bigger detractors or downsides, especially on smaller teams is obviously, um, you know, you never know when critical situations are going to unfold. And this is not much different than say, even just conventional IT positions, right? Um, when you're on a small IT team, um, someone is on call 24 seven, right? Because you never know when, you know, a critical system is going to go offline or an application is going to crash or something disastrous is going to happen. Well, uh, a SOC operation is no different. And, um, and, and so, so there's that, that kind of unpredictability of, of workload, right? Um, you know, you could have a pretty quiet week and then the week of Christmas, um, all hell breaks loose. And, and that's, that's not, always, uh, not always desirable, right? Um, and then I'd say the other one that can, that can be just as, uh, just as taxing and, and, and tends to burn folks out if it's not kept, uh, kept at bay is um, the concept of sort of that, that alert fatigue of, you know, running on a treadmill but never feeling like you're getting anywhere. 
Um, and, and I, but I really think that there's a solution to that problem. And it's something that I, I, I harp on pretty heavily in my sock is, um, you know, if, if we're noticing that we're just getting bombarded with alerts week after week after week, you know, there should be some, some, some metric tied to this to say how many of these alerts are actionable. The ones that are not, there should be an output there, right? It should be the tuning of those sensors to reduce that noise because otherwise, the SOC analyst becomes an immune to it, becomes numb to, you know, the, this noise that's coming from all these systems and sensors, and now we're no longer delivering a valuable service. So, um, but, but the alert fatigue is real, and it is something that I see pretty much everywhere that I go. Um, you know, I, I drop in as a consultant to many other pretty mature SOC operations, and that's one of the first things I see is a 50,000 alert backlog for, spans years because no one will ever get to the bottom of it. And, and they still yeah. think that the solution is, just chipping away at it one day at a time. And I'm like, but, but no one has addressed where all these are coming from yet, right? So like you'll, you'll never get to inbox zero here because no one's stopping to tune any of the things that are creating this noise. Uh, so you're, 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 you're on the hamster wheel, right? You're, you're running, mm -hmm. but you're never going to get to the end of this. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I see burning out SOC analysts the fastest to where they, they want to move up or out. And, uh, and unfortunately, yeah. uh, oftentimes out is a much faster route whenever you're, you're burning out that way. And when you say out, um, just out of curiosity, when you say out, are you talking about out to just go start fresh at a different sock, um, basically? Maybe, but, but I'll tell you that, you know, I, I've, seen, I've seen folks that have burned out at, at, at those levels, and, and oftentimes the last thing they want to do is go from one sock to another sock, right? Uh, the grass is not always greener. Now, you know, of course, if you know, if you're lucky and you find that you find that other place that is putting those concepts into practice and is preventing the burnout and and trying to curb the fatigue, um, then then sure. But I, I hate to say it, but I think it's it's the majority of operations that I've seen that are that are still combating that and not doing a very good job at it. And so um, it's 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 a pretty rampant issue. You know, um, it's. It's it's kind of a it's kind of an abstract answer, but but I can I can tell you that essentially my path to sort of getting to where I am now was um, a whole lot of self study because like most folks I was doing something completely unrelated um, before I, I entered into the security space and um, I had to build on I, I had to build my skills on you know open source tools open source knowledge. Um, a lot of nights and weekends, you know, tinkering. I'm sure everyone in this space is either, you know, deployed or at least thought about deploying a home lab. I, and I can't uh, recommend that enough. Uh, but, but pursuing knowledge um, and not, not relying on formal training for it in all cases. Um, because don't get me wrong, formal training is great. But some of the better formal training can be cost prohibitive, especially if you don't even have a job in that space yet. So not waiting for formal training um, and instead pursuing as much knowledge as you can with your own mechanisms. Um, you know, finding a mentor in the space, someone that's willing to, to, to kind of take you aside and show you the ropes. Um, and then as, 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 as much of a cliche as this is, um, you know, Twitter, right? Um, I, I'm not a huge social media person, but I, I think most people in our space would agree that uh, Twitter can be a pretty valuable source of knowledge and of, of networking for, especially for InfoSec folks. Uh, but then it kind of boils down to, to knowing who to follow uh, for, to, to maintain a decent signal and noise ratio, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but then the critical thinking aspect of it, you know, that again is, is I think a skill that's tough to teach and I think it, it might be tough to just simply acquire. But I will say that one thing that I attribute my own critical thinking skills to um, is that I worked in a previous job where it was very heavily uh, centered around troubleshooting complex systems. So, you know, I would say, as, as simple and silly as this might sound, if you want to work on critical thinking skills, um, the next time something complex breaks, you know, my toaster no longer makes toast, right? Like, don't throw it out. Fix it. Because as, as seemingly unrelated as that is to InfoSec, it's actually very related. Because if you can work through figuring out why that toaster no longer works, you are demonstrating the skills that people like me are looking for in a stock analyst, right? Mm -hmm. Making toast has nothing to do with solving intrusions, but problem solving, critical thinking will get you through that process. And that's, I think, one of the most valuable skills that you could be working on. 
Interesting. Cool. All right. Well, um, this is this has been incredibly valuable. I definitely think folks watching this are gonna be much more well informed on what kind of a stock analyst is and kind of what the expectations are and how to how to progress towards that. So talking with Eric Capuano of Recon InfoSec. I really appreciate it, Eric. Wow, that was great. And I really, really want to uh, extend my sincere appreciation to Eric for taking the time uh, to talk to me and provide all that great content uh, for you all to be able to digest. So definitely SOC Analyst job is a, a fantastic job, a lot of opportunity. If you love puzzles, um, I think it's right uh, for you, obviously, there's uh, burnout as a concern, and you know, getting the call at 2 a.m. Uh, you know, b threat actors, bad guys, uh, they don't take nights and weekends off, and holidays, you know, actually is kind of the best time for them to attack because they know that organizations typically are on a skeleton crew. So definitely some things to think about as you're going along your cyber journey and thinking about it. But again, really, really appreciate uh, Eric uh, for his time. Thank you, Eric. Now, if you, if you like this and you want to follow the Choose Your Own Adventure series, we're going to be talking to TJ Nelson coming up here in a few weeks. Uh, he's a malware, you know, he was a former malware analyst, so we're going to be talking level one malware analyst. Uh, we'll be talking to a pen tester, uh, Paul Imey, coming up here next week. Uh, and really, what does a level one ethical hacker, a pen tester, offensive security type person do? And we'll be doing a threat analyst later on. If there's another job uh, in the field that you'd like more in information on, uh, put it in the comments below. Below, and I'll uh, find an expert in the field and interview them and get the answers that you want to hear about these jobs. Um, I really appreciate it. Be sure to hit like on the video, subscribe if you want to uh, help me, you know, promote my show and promote uh, this content. And until next week, stay secure.